Hello, this is Ms. Augustine, and today we are going to begin talking about bonding. And in our textbook, bonding is in chapters 6, 15, and 16. So in 6, we talk about bonding, and then we go into more depth in 15 about ionic, and in 16 about covalent. So we're going to be talking about covalent and ionic bonding. So first off, let's introduce ourselves to chemical bonding. What is a chemical bond? It's that mutual attraction between the nuclei and valence electrons of different atoms that binds the atoms together. And when we say valence electrons, we're talking about the outermost electrons. So valence electrons, it turns out, determine the chemical properties of an element. And so that's why we spent some time learning about electron configurations, because the outermost electrons determine what's going to happen when two atoms encounter each other. So valence electrons are the electrons in the highest occupied energy level of an atom, element's atoms, and by valence electrons we are referring specifically to the S and P sublevel. How do you determine the number of valence electrons? It turns out that the group number tells you the number of valence electrons. And again, you could also do an electron configuration diagram, but that takes more time, and just looking at the number of the group in the periodic table is much, much easier. So there are two types of bonding that we will talk about. Ionic bonding, which is bonding that results from the electrical attraction between anions and cations. So with ionic bonding, somebody gained electrons and somebody lost electrons. And so there's going to be a negative ion and a positive ion, and they will be attracted to each other. And the other type of bonding we'll talk about is covalent bonding. And that results from the sharing of electron pairs between two atoms. So in forming <coughs> compounds, atoms tend to try to achieve the electron configuration of a noble gas. What does that mean? Well, noble gases have a full S and P sublevel, and the S sublevel holds two electrons, and the P holds six. So two plus six is eight, and eight is great. So in order to get to a noble gas configuration, elements try to get eight valence electrons. And we call this the octet rule. Atoms will lose, gain, or share electrons in order to achieve a stable octet of electrons. So remember, two plus six is eight, and eight is great. So with co covalent bonds, that's a bond between two nonmetals in which they have to share electrons to form a stable octet. And atoms can share two electrons, which is a single bond, one from each atom, four, that's a double bond, and six electrons would be a triple bond. So how do you know whether a bond is going to be ionic or covalent? Bonding between atoms of different elements is rarely purely one or the other, and it's usually some somewhere in between there. So the only time you have a pure covalent bond is when it's two atoms of the same element, and then there's some degree of ionic or covalent character. So the degree of ionic or covalent bonding is determined by something called the difference in electronegativity of the elements. And so electronegativity is really the determining factor. And depending on the difference in electronegativity, you would have polar covalent bonds, which means the electrons are not equally shared between the atoms, or nonpolar covalent bonds, which the atoms are sharing the electrons completely equally. and if somebody got the electrons and somebody lost the electrons, it would be an ionic bond. So what is electronegativity then? Electronegativity is defined as the tendency for an atom to attract electrons to itself when it is chemically combined with another element. So you can think of it as kind of the bully factor. If one atom has high electronegativity and it encounters another atom, with low electronegativity, it just grabs the electrons. So it's kind of, like I said, a little bit of a bully factor. So 
In general, elements that need electrons to complete their energy level will have a high electronegativity. So elements that are all the way on the right side of your periodic table tend to have very high electronegativities, and those are typically nonmetals. Elements that are more stable by losing electrons have low electronegativity, and in general, metals have very low electronegativity, and the lowest electronegativity would be on the far left-hand side of your periodic table. So electronegativity increases across a period and decreases from top to bottom within a group, and Nobel gases are omitted because electronegativity does not exist for noble gases. So with covalent bonding, a polar covalent bond results if the electronegativity difference is between 0.4 and 1.7. And so we show that with little delta negative and delta positive showing that in this case oxygen has more electronegativity, so the electrons spend more time on oxygen and less time on hydrogen, so the hydrogen side is sort of positive and the oxygen side is sort of negative. Where a nonpolar covalent bond, there is very little difference in the electronegativities of the elements, so between 0 and 0 0.4, for instance like chlorine and itself, and there the, elect the electrons are being equally shared. So again, bonding is this electrostatic force of attraction between two atoms, ions, or molecules, and they're trying to follow the octet rule where all atoms want eight valence electrons, so a full S and P sublevel. And the exception to that rule is hydrogen and helium. They're kind of weirdos. They only need two electrons because hydrogen and helium are the only elements up there on the first row of the periodic table. So there's only an S sublevel, and therefore they only need two electrons because that's all the S can hold. So, and by valence electron, we mean the electrons in the highest occupied energy level of an element's atoms. So we use something called a Lewis dot structure, and that's an electron dot structure, to show the number of valence electrons. And they are diagrams that show the electrons as dots. So instead of writing little e's, you use dots to show how many valence electrons there are. And since valence electrons are referring to just the S and P sublevel, there's a total of eight. You never have more than eight. So don't draw 20 dots around an atom, only eight, because we're talking about valence. And two plus six is eight, and eight is great. And each dot is representing an electron. So here is a chart that would show for groups 1a through 8a, the s block and the p block, and here are the elements in period 2 of the periodic table. This is showing you what their electron configurations would be, so you'll see s1, s2, and then uh, p1 through 6, and then the number of dots that you would show would be 1 through 8. So everything in group 1 has one valence electron, everything in group 2 has two, and so on until you get to 8a, which is the noble gases, and they all have 8. So here is showing you elements 1 through 20, and we're showing the, again, just the um, valence electrons, and so you'll notice that you're just using dots, so hydrogen has one, helium has two valence, and you'll notice that the maximum over here in the noble gas column is eight valence electrons, and again, remember, we were talking about the dots, meaning electrons. Where you put it is really arbitrary, although typically you'll show one on each side of the element symbol till you get to four, then you start pairing them up, and you'll see that we typically put a maximum of two per side. So if you are going to draw a Lewis dot structure using these dot diagrams, you would determine how many shared electrons um, two atoms or two elements would need, and so you're going to figure out how many more they need to obtain an octet, and then you would place the electrons in each bond that you need. Let's say you needed one bond, if you were hydrogen, you would show the one pair of electrons between the two hydrogens, and then you would decide if there are any other electrons where they should go, and then fill in with the rest of the electrons to give every atom an octet. 
So for now, we're going to, I'm going to leave off and stop here. But what we will be doing is a worksheet that demonstrates how to do these diagrams. So for now, this is Ms. Augustine signing off.